From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. A nickel bag gets sold in the park. I want in. Yes, peace, family. We are back with another verified DB teach tape. It's your gracious host, Mr. VDB. And you already know I'm back once again to kick some game and some flavor for all my young DBs out there. I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you've been being safe. I saw a lot of games canceled last week due to the COVID outbreaks on these teams. So make sure, guys, you're safe. But at the same time, make sure that you still put in the work both physically and mentally. And especially mentally. Especially in times like this when you really can't hit the field like that sometimes. You got to make sure you're mentally sharp because the game is 90% mental, 10% physical. Never forget that. And with that being said, you know, we back with another teach tape. Today we're going to be breaking down I got Patrick Sertan along with J.C. Horn, two great SEC DBs. And, you know, I want to show you some things you can learn from their teach tape and their film, how to take your game to that elite level. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Now, as we can see, this is our guy, Patrick Satan, lined up with George Pickens, who's another phenomenal receiver in his sophomore year. Very talented receiver. Patrick Satan probably want to be, uh, is going to be one of the top corners in next year's draft. So with that being said, let's look, at, let's look at the technique on this play. Now, first of all, the first thing you always want to remember, guys, and I always tell you positions of power. So Patrick Satan is lined up inside leverage. He's shaded to the inside. And when you're inside leverage, the first thing I know is this guy is my best friend. This guy is my best friend. This is my help right here, the sideline. So any outside release, I want to push this guy to the sideline. I want to push him to my friend because this is probably the greatest DB, the greatest tackler, the greatest defender of all time. If anybody touches him, he's making the play. So that's one thing I want to keep in mind. So line up inside leverage. Let's go ahead and play the clip. So great job right here. This is something we don't talk about enough, and I want more young DBs to start utilizing. This is what I like to call the fake jam. The fake jam is meant in order for receivers to show their release. Guys, when you get at the elite level, some of you are going to be playing college football, some of you are in college football now. When you go against these elite receivers, these receivers, these quick twitch receivers at the line who are very good at releasing, they know how to dance, they know how to wiggle at the line, they're very hard to keep up with, and they beat you at the line, the Jerry Judys, the Jalen Waddles, these just quick twitch guys, one thing you want to show them is the hand. Show them the fake jam. What the fake jam does is it forces them to show their release early. Receivers are taught, guys, whenever they see a DB's hand, to swipe it, to swim it, to go ahead and get into your release. Never let that hand touch you. So one way you counter this is you show them a fake jam. This jam is not meant to put hands on a receiver. It's meant to show the release. It's meant to show the release. Once this guy, George Pickens, declares his release, then you want to reposition that hand back on him. So watch what Patrick Sertan does. He shows the fake jam. George Pickens gets into his release. Now he puts the real hand on him. Now that he shows his release, he puts the real hand on him. And it kind of stumbles the receiver. It makes the receiver think at the line because now he know he got fooled into showing his release. But now that he has the release, the next thing you want to do that Patrick Satan does, look how he's the body lean. You want to lean into him. Force him towards that sideline. Apply pressure right here. Apply pressure. He's in phenomenal position. He could be in a little bit better, and I'm going to show you back from the top. But he's in phenomenal position right now. He's going ahead. He's working that body lean. And he does what I talk about all the time, turning outside in. Some DB coaches call it turning into the body. He turns into the body because the first thing you're checking for when you're even with the receiver is back shoulder. So he turns into the body. He declares it's not a back shoulder, but he's won so much at the route. By the time he flips his head back around, the ball is overthrown. Great job by Patrick Satan. Now, let me run it back one more time from the top. Now, one thing I would say to get a little bit better, after you shoot this fake jam, guys, I still want you to get inch back. So you're shooting the fake jam knowing that you're not meant to touch the guy. Now I'm going to go ahead and inch back and shuffle to the receiver. Shuffle to the receiver. He kind of gets on his toes a little bit. Shuffle to the receiver. Shuffle to the body. You dig? Don't turn into his body, shuffle into the body. You want to stay as square as possible because what that does is that helps when you're square, it helps to widen the receiver. 
But when you open up and turn, it's almost like you're giving him a path. But good job, nonetheless, applying pressure, leaning on the receiver, like I said, turning outside in, then working back inside, incomplete pass. Now here on this play, we got our guy J.C. Horn. This is uh, from about, I want to say, two weeks ago when they were playing Florida. He's matched up with Pitts, and Pitts is one of these freaks. He's kind of one of these new age tight ends where they're really big receivers, but they can really run routes, and they're very good at bodying you up. So again, I believe my guy J.C. Horn is lined up inside leverage. He's understanding his position of power, which means my sideline is my help. My sideline is my friend. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Now, one thing I got to judge him on is the false step. He didn't use a fake jam, so it's no need for the false step. Guys, you got to be a, pay attention to detail sometimes. This is unnecessary. and You're going to see how at the end of the day, that little false step, it kind of hurts him a little bit. Go ahead and inch back. And if you don't want to inch back, just go ahead and shoot your shot on the jam. You see what I'm saying? But this is a false step. You didn't put hands on him. And he kind of squats and comes forward for no reason. And that hurts him right here. Now he ends up inching back, but he took a false step already. He should be a little bit, pretty much a little bit farther back, giving himself room to shuffle to the receiver. Now right here with a guy like Pitts, he, he immediately opens up. You see how he opens up to apply pressure? I want you to shuffle to the pressure. Remember that, guys, shuffle to the pressure, meaning taking one shuffle step into this guy. You want to stay square as long as possible, guys. You're going to get more strength on your jam, more emphasis on your jam, rather than you turning up and trying to push the guy outwards. You're inviting him right here. All this guy sees is this open gate turning open. This is like a gate. Nobody runs into a gate. They wait till the gate opens, then they go. That's how receivers thinking about it. They wait till the gate opens, then they go. But when your gate is closed all the time, it's very hard for them to get through. They have to run through you, and that's what you want. But nonetheless, opens up the gate, does a great job of applying pressure. Again, guys, I, I really want you guys to start working towards the hip, not too high. It's very hard to jam that shoulder, especially when receivers are taught to dip on you, and it kind of throws you off balance. But nonetheless, great job of applying pressure. Really want to force him towards the sideline. Great job of turning outside, back in. Remember, he's even. He's even. Now, at this point, you just got to make a play on the ball, guys. This is a 50-50 ball. We can't lose these. This is a 50-50 ball. He gets kind of little boyed. You dig? And Pitts gets the catch. But this goes back to staying square. You see how close he was to the sideline? And he opened up the gate. He did a great job of applying pressure. But... He didn't apply enough pressure because he didn't he uh he didn't keep the gate closed. Let me run it back one more time. See guys, false step. If he backs up right here, inch back and shuffles to the guy, shuffle to him, he was able to push him out a little bit more and leave him no room. Other than that, terrific job with everything else. We just gotta win the 50-50 ball, guys. We just gotta win it. Here's our guy JC Horn again. Uh, on this play, it looks like he's lined up almost head up, but judging by the last play, I would say inside leverage. So position of power, understanding the sideline is your friend. If you're lined up inside leverage, guys, that means mainly the defense is teaching you you have no help inside. You have no help inside. So we got to keep our leverage. One thing he does, he kind of gets lulled to sleep. As soon as I see this receiver with his head down, I'm keeping my position of power. Not only does he not keep his position of power, he allows the receiver to get inside leverage. Then he immediately begins to open up. He opens up that gate. Now, again, we understand that DB is not going to be perfect, guys. It's not going to be perfect. And because it's not perfect, you have to always go to plan B. Plan B is to always apply pressure to the point of pressure and get to the hip. Get to the hip, guys. Do not continue to run aside this receiver and let him run this route on air. Great job by J.C. Horn right here, immediately attacking the hip. He attacks the hip, but like I said, guys, let's work those hands a little bit lower. He goes to tackle the receiver instead of getting in that hip pocket and tucking in that shirt. We were taught to pull down that jersey and tuck in the shirt right around the hip area. You know what I'm saying? So he ends up getting a flag on this play because he didn't get his hands low enough. But again, it starts at the line. 
Now, here we have again J.C. Horn matched up last week with Seth Williams. He did an excellent job, played a terrific game against Seth Williams. And I want you to watch the footwork at the line. Many of the plays J.C. Horn made last week at Seth Williams was strictly because of how he played at the line. He jammed with his feet, guys. Footwork is very important with jam. Everybody wants to work on just getting their hands on the receiver. But your feet. Your feet jam the guy. Watch his footwork on this play. Great job of staying outside leverage and just inching back. Come. And he shuffles into the receiver. Shuffles into the receiver. At this point, the receiver has completely lost. He's completely lost this, guys. He is dead in the water right now. Now he's in scramble mode. He doesn't know how he's going to get off this press. He hadn't made the, uh, the DB open up his gate. The gate is still closed. He's shuffling to the guy, and now the DB is at the advantage. He's in such good position because he stays square at the line. He inched back, and he let the receiver come to him that he can now cheat and look. He's looking back at the ball before the receiver is looking back at the ball. You dig? Great job looking back, keeping his outside leverage, and just making a play. Just making a play on the ball. Beautiful job by J.C. Horn on that play. But that started at the line with the footwork, guys. Your footwork. Stay square. Stay square. I'm telling you, if you stay square, you win. Be patient and stay square. So, again, this is our guy, J.C. Horn, later in the game, matched up with Seth Williams again. Peep the footwork at the line. Very patient. Little sloppy in the sense of the stance. I want you guys to get a little bit lower because the lower you are, the quicker you can get. But at this point, he's playing very confident. He's very patient. He realizes that the key is to keep his gate closed. The key is to keep his gate closed. So watch him inch back, inch back. And then right here, after the receiver has declared, you can tell this receiver has declared. He's put his head down. He's chosen his release. Attacks him. Boom. And as soon as he attacks him, because he understands he's in good leverage position, he's got his head back, guys, looking at the quarterback before the receiver. This receiver is struggling right now. Seth Williams, and Seth Williams is a terrific receiver probably going to be a high pick in the draft next year, maybe a first-round receiver. He's struggling right now, guys. He can't get off the jam. He can't get J.C. Horn to open up his gate because he can't scare this guy because he understands his position of power and he understands that staying square is the key. Therefore, J.C. Horn is playing receiver. He's playing receiver right now. He's got his head back before the receiver has his head back. Therefore, he's able to judge the ball before the receiver is able to judge it, and boom. Easy money. Easy money, guys. But that is at the line. That starts at the line. Everybody, I've been getting a lot of DMs. People have been asking me, how do you defend slants? How do you defend posts? At the end of the day, when we're talking about man-to-man -man coverage, it starts at the line. It starts at the line, guys. If you win within that first five yards, you stay square. You inch back. You shuffle to the receiver. You get your hands on him, and you apply pressure to the point of pressure. Guys, you're going to be playing receiver on that play, not the receiver. The receiver's going to end up playing DB, and that's what happened on this play. Great job, a terrific job by J.C. Horn that whole game. With that being said, let me give you a couple teach points to leave for the day, things I want the guys to work on. Like I said, staying patient. Staying patient at the line. You have to do it. You have to do it, guys. Inch back. Do not open up the gate. When you open up the gate, you are inviting a receiver to run through. You're inviting him to take off on you. Nobody, think about it, guys, nobody, when you go in these apartment complexes, anything, people wait for the gate to open until they go. Nobody just runs straight through the gate. That's the last possible option. Nobody wants to run straight through the gate. They wait for the gate to open. Keep your gate closed, guys. I know it's, I know it's, I know it's hard for you to do that. I know you get nervous. You think, man, I'm up here with this 4-3 guy. He's going to run right past me. Keep your gate closed. He can't run past you until you open the gate. He can't do it, guys. Make him run through you. Make him run through you. If he has to run through you, that's a win for us every single time. You see what I'm saying? And number two, I want you to work on, like I showed you in that first clip, Patrick Sertan. Work on your fake jam. When you get these little receivers, they want to dance. They want to be cute at the line. They want to show off their footwork, what they've been doing on the speed ladder. Show them the fake jam. That fake jam always works. It always works. However, 
Make sure that on the back end, you understand yourself that it's a fake jam, meaning you got to be prepared what comes with it when you show that jam. So we show the jam, then we immediately get back and reposition ourselves to put hands on this guy, to shuffle to this guy. So it's a chess move, guys. A lot of guys want to show a fake jam and get stuck right there, flat footed. No, show the jam, pull it back. And be ready to run, be ready to get to him, be ready to shuffle to the receiver because his release is coming. Because they're taught not to let DBs get their hands on him. So that's today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like the video, guys. Also, uh, I always say that I'm going to keep posting on Instagram, but I never do it. But I'm going to make sure I get on the Instagram, guys. But nonetheless, follow us on Instagram, Verified DBs, at Verified DBs. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And until next time, this is Mr. VDB. I'm out.